Hello, Paul is Best for UK here, and welcome to new video. So today we're looking at Flying Shark with the ZX Spectrum. Let's have a look at this one. So this is Graph Gold 1987. Let's start the game. This is by Firebird. That was quite a uh, company back in the day. A quite popular budget labour company. So how do we start? One player. How do you move it? I don't know. Let's press enter now. Hmm. One player. Yes, of there we go. Right. Okay, so this is a, a sort of 1942 clone, uh, you know, the uh, flight sim, the uh, top down vertical shooter that was by Capcom in the arcades. Yeah, not too bad looking game, actually. Oh, you fuck, I'm already dead. Right, okay. So everything's yellow, sadly. There's no colour in the game. Spectrum is capable of doing colour in games, but I think a lot of programmers just wanted to avoid colour clash. But with a game like this, I think I would have just not minded the colour clash. I think I would have not cared about if a big black, sorry, a big uh, block square was around the uh, the uh, main sprite. I don't think I would have cared because it's a bit yellow looking in it. It's a bit. Um, you wouldn't be at a place on a monochrome television set, to be honest. Playability is good though, don't get me wrong, it plays well, it's very responsive to the controls, it's not too overwhelmingly difficult by the looks of it so far. In mean, some games you've got just the sheer bullets going absolutely everywhere and you've got no chance, but this is a bit more laid back, it's a bit more, you can actually play the game without worrying too much about dying. I mean you're going to die but on the game, but it's not... It's not overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly uh, sort of in your face. I'm gonna destroy you, sort of thing, which a lot of games back then was. Got some flicker on the uh, graphics here. Uh, not sure if that's showing up on the YouTube video. Uh, probably just the way the uh, emulator works. But yeah, it's, it's playing well. It's playing. It's playing all right, to be honest. Uh, flying shark on the ZX Spectrum. The original cost of this was £7.95 in the 90s or the 80s money, so probably quite an expensive game, actually. But yes, um, yeah, I think it's, it's alright, it plays well. Uh, could have done with a bit more colour, like I said. Um, but yeah, it, it looks apart if you can get around that colour thing. And uh, yes, and there's a two player mode, obviously, because it's got the two player hood on the side. I don't know if that's cooperative or like dual player at the same time or if you have to take it in turns, I'm not sure. But yeah, that's a flying shark on the ZX Spectrum. I'm going to give that one um, a 7 out of 10. So I'd like to uh, thank you for watching. Bye! Hello, Paul is Best for UK here and welcome to another video. So today we're looking at 3D Star Strike, a game that we had as a family when I was younger. And uh, yep, so this is like a sort of 3D game. I've got a lot of experience with this game because I've, I've played it many, many moons ago. Play it quite often nowadays, actually. When I when I do hook up the Spectrum properly, uh, I've never tried it on Spectrum Next Clone that I've got the uh, Xperia Pi. Probably runs too fast with them uh, speed increases. But yeah, this is a good game for 1984. It's like well, well ahead of its time. I mean, there was like Pac-Man and stuff in 1984, and then you had this with these flying, rotating vector graphic. What looked like a bit like Tie Fighters, but it's not. Obviously, they're not because this is not a Star Wars official game. So we were approaching the enemy base, and one thing that I did impress me about the enemy base, this section here, was how smooth the uh, ship or the uh, the spacecraft, the the horizon banks left and right. If you, I know it's only dots, but if you get your own imagination going, it's quite good. To be fair, if you were uh, look at games such as uh, the original. Uh, sort of early flight simulators it was just it wasn't as smooth as this with your left and right rotation with the horizon over it banks so i always thought that made a much smoother and nicer gameplay and this it impressed me even more look at this this is almost like a uh, non-filled star wing or star fox on the snares it's just that smooth we're running on a 1984 system here and look how smooth that is these are vector style wireframe graphics. Obviously, wasn't too taxing on the uh, 
the uh, system itself. That's probably why the Vectrex did so well. And that was impressive as well. Do I think Star Strike uh, 3D from 1984 is a good game? Absolutely I do. I think it's brilliant. You've even got the uh, the boss here. It slows down a bit here. But yeah, oh status red. This is really hard this bit because you have to really destroy everything before you get. And that status red means... I think it means... No, actually, the status red means you're in the danger zone and the uh, shield is on the left. I, thought, I forgot about that. But yeah, really good game. Um, one for the... Uh, if you want to push your Spectrum 48 to the limits, uh, this is sort of the way to go. Uh, impressive. Yeah, true, none of the walls were filled in, but there wasn't filled in on Mercenary, and that was a fantastic game as well. I think that's the way to do it, 3D. If you play something like Castle Master on the Spectrum, it's very slow. You, the Freescape engine on the Spectrum is about two frames a second, if that. And this is more like five, isn't it? Playable. So yeah, that's a 3D Star Strike on the ZX Spectrum. I'm going to give this one a massive uh, 9 out of 10. I think it's very innovative for a 1984 game. So I'd like to uh, thank you for watching. Bye!